Hi everyone, how are you doing today? I am pretty excited for this video. As I say every week, do I say that every week? I like making videos for you guys, truly. In this video, I'm going to be decorating notebooks. It's an annual thing here that I do for back to school, but you don't have to be going to school or going back to school to make these. You can use them for your home office. You can use them for a planner anything that you want to. I'm not going back to school, luckily. I'm very happy about that. I never really liked school, even though I did really well. I think that it's something that's important, but yeah, I was really excited when I graduated. So the video is titled Sharpie Notebooks. Don't take that too literally. I do use Sharpies in every single design, but that doesn't mean that I use only Sharpies. And you can do this with other supplies as well. If you don't have Sharpies or permanent markers, try the designs with paint or crayons or colored pencils. If you happen to be new here, I post a video every single Friday. Happy Crafty Friday to y'all. If you never want to miss out, please ring the bell to turn notifications on, subscribe, and without further ado, let's get into the notebook decorating. I'm using the composition style notebooks and these are just from Target. They were probably 80 cents or less a piece. You can get these for even cheaper from places like Office Max, Office Depot, maybe Walmart. I've seen them on sale for as low as five or 20 cents. So it just really depends. You can use the spiral kind, you can decorate a sketchbook cover. It doesn't matter. Also, you see here that I have a ton of different colors of Sharpie markers. You definitely don't need to have all these colors. And as I mentioned in the intro, you don't even need to use Sharpies, but I just thought it would be fun to like see what we can do with Sharpies and you know, have all these different designs. Also, my adhesive of choice to stick the paper onto the front of the notebook, since I'm not going to be coloring directly on these, is Mod Podge, and I use a sponge brush. Now, you don't have to do this either. Like, everything that I'm telling you is optional. You can use your own creativity, you can use the supplies that you have, but what I'm doing here is I am taking a notebook and I'm going to kind of fit the, not kind of, I'm going to fit the paper, the scrapbook paper. It's a piece of cardstock paper. I'm going to fit that to the cover, and this is just one way that you can do it. You can put it underneath the cover like I'm doing here, and trace around it with a pencil lightly, and then take it back out and cut around to make it the exact same shape as the cover. Sometimes I'll cut this out before, and other times I'll glue it on and then cut around after so it's perfect but it's up to you. For this first notebook design, I'm going to be using metallic Sharpie markers. My first notebook design is inspired by Urban Outfitters and it's this wall hanging with the phases of the moon. I'm not following it exactly as it is, but you can see here that I'm measuring the five moons that I'm gonna do on here with a ruler just to like space them out. I want them to look as centered as possible, but I am honestly one of the worst people at measuring and being really precise with uh, my artwork or just anything I'm doing, like measuring the covers for these. Like I definitely am not great at it. I get a little bit impatient with measuring and it just never turns out perfect, but that's fine. They're not in order or anything, but I just thought it would be cool to kind of match the wall hanging, which by the way, you could make for much cheaper than $120, just saying. After sketching the moons out lightly, I erased as many of the extra pencil lines as I could, like any of the tick marks for the measurements and then I just went around and colored in the lines and like inside everything. I just colored all that with gold and I went over each moon a couple times to fill in any areas that may not have gotten enough ink and just didn't look as opaque as it should be. So here I'm attaching the paper to the front of the notebook. You're just gonna dip the sponge in, cue slow-mo. Then brush the adhesive onto the page as evenly as possible. Don't get it too gloppy or anything. Try to spread it out as best as you can. And do pay the most attention to the edges. You have to work kind of quickly because it will start to dry. Go back over the corners if you have to before putting the paper on. And once you do put that paper on, you'll want to smooth it out so there's no air bubbles, no bumps or creases or anything like that. And then you will want to let it dry as flat as you can with some weight on top 
so you can put more notebooks on top to dry that and here mine is completely dry so I'm going to move on to the next step that I kind of mentioned just to spruce it up you don't have to do this but I'm taking some glitter washi tape and I'm putting that on the edge like so and sticking that down if you have glitter duct tape it'll be a lot thicker than this and you won't have to color on the edge like I'm doing but I wanted it all to be like different shades of gold so I'm also taking the gold sharpie and filling in all the white on the binding there and now I have this moon phase notebook there are a couple spots of Mod Podge on the black paper so I might like go over that with the Mod Podge again just so it doesn't look like I got like greasy french fry fingers all over the notebook cover but otherwise I think it looks pretty cool Let's bring some colors into notebook design number two. So here I'm starting out with three different Sharpies. I do bring another one or two in. I don't know if I show them on camera, but I'm also going to be using isopropyl alcohol for this, AKA rubbing alcohol. And this is going to turn the Sharpie ink into watercolor paint basically, which is a really cool technique that I've done in some of my past videos. Also, you can see I have a paintbrush in the mix. We'll get to that in a minute, but first you're going to take one of your Sharpies and just color on something plastic. Then go ahead and dip your paintbrush into some of the rubbing alcohol and create a liquid paint-like uh, substance. And that's all we're gonna do for the background of this. You're just going to repeat that for multiple colors, as many colors as you want. Uh, you can do black for this if you want to also, it doesn't really matter. The more you dilute the ink, the lighter the color will be, and some pigments are stronger than others. I found that magenta, which I will be putting on, oh, I did put it on here. It looks kind of more fuchsia on here, but the magenta is super highly pigmented, so a little goes a long way with that one, but for others, you have to color more ink out, like the light blue, for example. You need a lot more of that to cover areas. This gives a really cool watercolor effect, as I mentioned. You could do this with watercolor paint if you don't want to go through the hassle of transforming your Sharpie ink into paint, or if you don't have Sharpies. Totally up to you, but I just think that this is really cool. Now that I have the background complete, I'm going to go in with the quote. You can probably see that I did a light outline of all the lettering first, and then I'm just going to go over that with a really dark gray Sharpie. Thank you, Leo, my cat, for interrupting this voiceover. <laughs> Leo, come here. Say hi to the peoples. Okay, look at that face. As I was saying, I went over the lettering with a dark gray Sharpie. I love the dark gray Sharpies. I got them in a giant pack from Target. I'll link it below if you are interested. Maybe they have them on Amazon, but Love them. Now we have this super inspirational notebook that's really colorful and cute. Let's move on to number three. For this one, I'm going to use some colorful scrapbook paper. This is kind of like a watercolor cloud-like background texture, not texture, but it's called Dip Dyed. I tried to show you some of the pages that were inside. I ended up choosing this one because it has a variety of colors from yellow to like kind of turquoisey and then blue. Also, when you are coloring on colored paper with colored markers, they're going to show up a little bit differently than they would on white paper, obviously. So I am just testing the different colors on the yellow and different parts of the, the colors of the page. Okay, we're moving on from this because I'm doing a bad explaining job. I swear I finished school. I just am not the greatest public speaker. I don't have a script written down or anything, so... Anyway, I cut out the... I can't speak. This is fun. Now I've got that cut out and I am going to start doing some random doodles. These are flower petally, mandala, mandala, however you guys say it, zentangly elements. There's not much to explain here. I'm doing the same shape inside those shapes and then I'm putting lines inside to kind of look like peace signs or leaves and some circles to go around that and just add a little bit of dimension to the shape so they're not as boring. And then I just went around with these ruffles. I went ahead and covered the page with tiny stars in different colors 
of Sharpies, as you can see. I thought that it looked a little bit plain and boring at this point, so I'm going to create a rectangle with some of the leftover paper. This will act as a label for the notebook, so you can write notes or you can write what subject this notebook is for. I actually have two rectangles. One is a bigger yellow one and the other is a smaller white one. I just attach these together with a glue stick and then attach them to the cover with a glue stick as well. And that's it for this one. I don't know what else to say. It's really cool and colorful. Finally, I'm going to do one for those of you who might like to draw or doodle a little bit more. So for this one, I have sketched out a mountain range. This may look familiar, familiar. <laughs> This may look familiar to those of you who have been with my channel for a while, or if you've just been watching my videos this year. It is based on my wood burning mountain range piece with the rainbow. So I'm gonna make it pretty similar to this. If you haven't seen my wood burning series, I'll link that in the description box below and in the iCard up in the corner. I did erase the outlines a little bit, so they ended up lighter and then I went over them again with a really dark gray sharpie. I love this dark gray sharpie. P.S. before I finish the design, if you're interested in maybe following me on Instagram, I'm pretty proud of how my feed is looking lately and I'm adding art back in to my photos so it's a mix of my modeling quote unquote and artwork. So I hope to see more of you guys over there. Okay, now back to the drawing. After doing the main outlines, I wanted to put a little bit of texture in. So I'm just doing lines in the ice cap area of the mountain range. Diagonal lines, nothing special. For some of them, I have them leaning one way and then for the other half, I have them leaning the opposite way. Then I have a rainbow. Uh, some people might be a little bit offended because I did not include indigo in this rainbow. I'm just doing six colors because, I mean, blue and indigo and violet, they just kind of like blend together when you look at a rainbow, kind of. Honestly, in art, it's just one less step and, you know, the blue and purple colors do kind of blend. So just pretend that indigo is in this. We're not going to be that technical. Now, for the background, this is why I mentioned we're not doing only Sharpies here. So don't get all bent out of shape that, oh my gosh, Sarah, you included a colored pencil in a Sharpie video. <laughs> yes, I am using colored pencil for the background because I don't want to do the Sharpie watercolor for the background and I don't want to do regular watercolor. I'm just doing colored pencil, okay? Let me live my life. So I just did a really, really light background with this as you can see and then I kind of outlined the clouds a little bit darker so they would stand out. Finally, I'm going in with a gray colored pencil, a really light one. These are Prismacolors, by the way, you can use Crayola, you can use any brand that you want. I think watercolor paints would look even better because it would kind of match the ink smoothness of the Sharpies. Then I cut everything out and the notebook is complete. This is one of my absolute favorites that I've ever made, I think, although I've made a lot in the past, as I mentioned. So. Let me know in the comment section below which of these four notebook designs is your absolute favorite from this video and if you do have an all-time favorite from any of my past videos, let me know that as well. Oh, and I'm actually really curious to know, are you going back to school? Are you someone who is in school or are you someone who has graduated from school? Maybe you're just going to use these around the house. I just want to know who's watching and get to know you guys a little bit better. Thank you for watching! If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up to let me know. I'm going to post a couple videos over here for you to watch if you are interested. And I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. Remember, I post every single Friday, so I hope to see you back here next week. Bye!